Church, Pastor Josiah here with your morning announcements. Um, very excited to tell you that uh, we're going to try to worship together this coming week uh, for Palm Sunday and then the Sunday after for Resurrection Sunday. We'll be out on our church parking lot, weather permitting, and just like in the past, uh, we will social distance, we'll require mask wearing, um, we will have hand sanitizer and uh, do, do our best just to keep everybody safe, even while we're uh, gathering together to worship the Lord together in the same space under the tents there um, on the back parking lot. So we hope that you'll plan to come and join us um, both on Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday. Um, I want to tell you also on Palm Sunday, that afternoon we'll be welcoming Gimbia Kettering, who's going to uh, teach us a little bit about um, inequity in education. Um, we're able to bring her in because we received a grant from the uh, Church of the Brethren Intercultural Ministries Office. And the director of that office, uh, Reverend LaDonna Sanders and Cozy, will be joining us later in April. She'll be preaching here at First Church. I hope that you guys have been enjoying um, the different guests that we've had um, during this season. We will continue to try to have guests as possible um, while we're doing uh, different sorts of virtual events and things. Um, you will hear from me next Sunday and on Easter Sunday um, at our live worship services. And by then, I'm sure you'll be ready for uh, more guests coming as well. Um, my friend uh, Hank Johnson, pastor of Harrisburg Brethren in Christ Church, will also be joining us in April. And uh, so those are a few of the people we have coming that you can be looking forward to. Also, in between Palm Sunday and Resurrection Sunday uh, is a very special time in the life of the Church of the Brethren, um, something we call Love Feast, and, and we will be meeting, uh, for all of those who feel uh, comfortable to do so, uh, we will be meeting at Reservoir Park um, on April the 1st, which is Maundy Thursday, um, at 6 p.m., and we'll be celebrating sort of a, a different kind of Love Feast service. We won't be doing feet washing as we would typically do. Instead, we'll use uh, disinfectant wipes and wash one another's hands. There will be hand sanitizer at every table, and so we'll encourage you to uh, sanitize yourself upon arriving, and uh, we'll also limit how many people can sit at each table, things of that nature. As far as the agape meal portion, um, it's just going to be very simple, probably just crackers that we can open. Um, you'll have your own packaged uh, little bit of, of snack there in front of you. And then we'll have also the prepackaged communion elements. Um, Love Feast is just a beautiful time to come together to remember the sacrifice that our Lord um, paid for each one of us and just to recognize his last supper with his uh, disciples and uh, just how he used even that moment to sort of turn the tables of power and uh, to lower himself uh, to being uh, the servant of us all. Um, so I hope that you'll uh, plan to join us. There is a playground right there by the pavilion, and we're going to get pa babysitting as well. So if you have children, they can come and be a part of our time together, and they'll also have somebody to watch them if they want to go uh, play at the playground instead. So uh, that Love Feast service, again, will be on April 1st, Thursday, April 1st, and that will begin um, at 6 p.m. We hope that you'll plan to join us. Uh, today is our first special offering of the year, and so I want to encourage you uh, to give um, above and beyond what you normally would, um, and also to do it separately so that it's easy for our treasurer. I want to thank Andy Broad, who did a great job of um, announcing and talking about the One Great Hour of Sharing special offering. Um, this uh, offering will go to benefit um, the work of our denomination at large, which includes international stuff. It includes things right here at home. 
Um, and he did a great job of showing how our church has interfaced uh, with a lot of those different things. If you're somebody who writes a check and sends it to the church, we want to ask that you uh, write two checks instead and use a separate envelope for your special offering. If you're somebody who uses the Tithely app, it's very simple. And it, uh, when you go to use the app, instead of um, just letting it be the way it is where it says tithe there on that menu, there's a drop down and you just click on it. And one of the options is special offering. Just click on special offering and whatever you give uh, will go towards the one great hour of sharing. So we want to uh, encourage you all to participate in that as well. And uh, the last thing I want to mention, um, as I said, this coming week is uh, Palm Sunday, and we will be together, and I'm very excited. I hope you're excited to be together as well. But um, in preparation for that, uh, you can also join us for our Bible study on Thursday. But I do want to specifically ask you, if you would have the time, to seek out something called the Inverse Podcast, and specifically the episode that was released on March the 14th. If you're unaware of what this is, uh, Inverse is a podcast that is hosted by our own Dr. Drew Hart, along with a friend of our congregation, Jared McKenna, who you might remember joined us. He visited us about a year ago, a little less than a year ago from Australia. Um, Jared and Drew host this podcast, and the, uh, the March 14th um, episode deals directly with the scripture we're going to look at next week, uh, the Mark 11 passage. And the guest is one of Drew's colleagues, Dr. Emerson Powery from Messiah University. And uh, it's about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Um, you don't have to listen to it all at once if you don't want. But I do want to encourage you. That'll get you off to, in the right direction as far as uh, preparing for this year's Holy Week um, season. Um, that's all I got for you today. I'm really excited once again to be together. We're excited to hear uh, Daniel Wright's testimony today as part of our worship. And uh, yeah, let's prepare our hearts. Let's prepare our minds to praise the Lord, to give him the praise that he so richly deserves. Praise the Lord, church.
bring to mind today um, all the times that you come through for us, Thank Lord. You. And uh, it brings to mind, Lord, um, all the amazing things uh, that are told about your son, Jesus Christ, and how often when he would do something amazing, he'd work a miracle, he would say, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and sometimes, Lord, it's so hard to keep it to ourselves. And at this point in time, Lord, we, we just thank you that we're able to um, just tell everybody about what you've done for us, Father. And uh, God, we, even now we ask that you prepare uh, Brother Daniel, who's going to bring his testimony mm -hmm. this morning, Father. God, we pray that um, you'll help us to just recognize all the times you've come through for us in the past. And to recognize that even if we're going through a tough time today, that you'll definitely come through for us once again, Lord. Um, help us not to be afraid to tell people, Lord, about you, about how good you are. It's all about your goodness today, mm -hmm. Father God. It's not about us, and it never has been. We just thank you, Lord, for being a good God, for being a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, Lord. God, we just pray that you'll work in and among us today as we give you the glory that you so richly deserve, Lord, and help us just to tell everybody we can about how good you are. God, we just love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and believe today. Amen.
each one of us. And uh, I want you right now just to think about um, what he's brought you through. And uh, let's acknowledge um, that we got some walking miracles in this house. Uh, we got some walking miracles in this faith community. And we're going to sing a song in Spanish and in English that just says, Look what the Lord has done. He's healed my body. He's touched my mind. He saved me right in his timing. Not necessarily when I wanted it to happen, right? But it's in his timing. Yes, just in yes, time. Lord, yes, He's an on-time God, isn't he, church? Yes, Hallelujah. So we're going to sing together. And then I think Donna might give us a little, or am I going to? I'll give you some instructions in between. Yes. I kind of forgot. My fault, church. Here we go.
a strong God, a God that can overcome yeah. Yeah. even the most difficult of circumstances. Mm. And church, you know that a lot of us have been going through some That's difficult circumstances, right. and uh, not the least of which is Brother Allen, that we mentioned in the last mm -hmm. song. Um, there's so many, Lord, that, that there's so many church that need yeah. to, to recognize God's ability to get them through. Mm. And uh, I mean, I, I recognize that, and that's why I still have joy, even all uh, after all I've been through. Um, and I hope that you have joy in your heart as well. This next song, we're just going to acknowledge God's ability to do everything that he said. And, and it's not just that he's able, it's that he does. Like, he promised it, right? And then he comes through, right? It's not like when I say, you know, Christine, I promise I'll do this, and then I never come through on it, right? It's a legitimate, like, God promised it. He said it. He's going to do it, right? Amen? And so that's, that's what this song is all about, his ability and his faithfulness and the fact that, that he will come through for us. And we recognize that today. Let's praise the Lord, church.
as well, Father. Because you brought us a mighty long way, Father. You're not finished yet. Uh, the, the song says you haven't brought us this far to leave us. Lord. We just thank you, Lord, for this journey that you brought us on. Lord, uh, we continue this morning in worshiping you with our tithes, with our offerings. We thank you for Brother Tom for bringing us special today. We thank you for uh, Daniel, our BPS, who's Yeah. 
Hi kids, Pastor Josiah here for the Time for Young Disciples. You can see I'm here at the Social Justice Library at the church. And uh, the book of the month this month for Women's History Month is a book called A is for Awesome by Ava Chen. And uh, this book uh, talks about 23 iconic women, and uh, we're going to celebrate them by reading this story today. So, let's have a look. It says, Hi, I'm Juno. There's a whole world of inspiring sheroes out there. Here are some of my favorites. Ready for some adventure? Let's go! A is for the awesome aviator Amelia Earhart, the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. And the quote says, the stars seem near enough to touch, and never before have I seen so many. B is for Beyonce, singer, songwriter, actress, producer, and all around Queen B. And her quote says, don't try to lessen yourself for the world. Let the world catch up to you. C is for the forever chic Coco Chanel, designer and OG grill bo girl boss. Her quote says, in order to be irreplaceable, one must always be different. D is for Dorothy Hodgkin, a crystallographer who won the Nobel Prize for succeeding in the impossible. E is for the defiant suffragette Emmeline Pankhurst, who helped women win the right to vote. We are here not because we are lawbreakers. We are here in our efforts to become lawmakers. F is for the flamboyant and fierce Flojo, the fastest woman of all time. Flojo said, when anyone tells me I can't do anything, I'm just not listening anymore. G is for groundbreaking artist Georgia O'Keeffe, mother of the modernist art movement, who said, to create one's world in any of the arts, to create one's world in any of the arts takes courage. H is for Harriet Tubman, the brave abolitionist who helped hundreds of slaves to freedom. I was the conductor on the, of the Underground Railroad for eight years, and I can say what most conductors can't say. I never ran my train off the track, and I never lost a passenger. I is for Pat, fashion legend Iris Apfel, who proves that your own style is the best style of all. When you don't dress like everybody else, you don't have to think like everybody else. J is for chef and author Julia Child, whose zest for French cooking inspired millions. Learn from your mistakes, be fearless, and above all, have fun. I almost did a Julia Child voice there, but thought better of it. <laughs> K is for Catherine Graham, the formidable first female publisher of the Washington Post. Courage is when you have a choice and you choose to be courageous. I like that. L is for Lucille Ball, comedic genius and the first woman ever to run a major television studio. M is for Malala, whose rallying cry for equality in education was heard around the world. That's something that we're getting behind here at First Church, um, equality in education. She said, when the whole world is silent, even one voice becomes powerful. N is for the tempestuous and talented Nina Simone, singer, songwriter, and activist. I'll tell you what freedom is to me. No fear. O is for Oprah, self-made television icon, philanthropist, role model. The list goes on. She said, I wish you curiosity and confidence, and I wish you ethics and enlightenment. I wish you guts. P is for Pat McGrath, makeup maestro and businesswoman. Creativity is the most important skill. Don't be scared to experiment. Q is for Queen Elizabeth I, whose quick wit, strategy, and tenacity brought a golden age to England. I am not afraid of anything. R is for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, 
Supreme Court Justice, and the Queen of Dissent. Fight for the things that you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. S is for Sacagawea, intrepid interpreter and guide for Lewis and Clark's historic expedition. T is for rock and roll superstar Tina Turner, who holds the record for the most concert tickets sold by a single performer. I believe that if you'll just stand up and go, life will open up for you. U is for Ursula K. Le Guin, prolific and prize-winning science fiction author. We read books to find out who we are, what we ourselves are, and may become. V is for Venus, Roman goddess of love, beauty, and victory. W is for Wu Zetian, the one and only female emperor in Chinese history. You can see a mirror there. X, Y, and Z are for extraordinary you and the zillions of brilliant, brave adventures you will have. And there's a picture of all the amazing icons that are celebrated here. And uh, there's a word I want to talk to you about today, and that word here is testify. Uh, later in our service, we're going to hear from Daniel, who's going to share his testimony, which is kind of a story um, of some things that he's been through and how um, God was able to bring him through. And when we share our testimony, often it can, um, it can help others uh, to get through difficult times themselves. Uh, this word testify means just to tell somebody about what's going on. Um, there's, a, there's an idea in uh, social justice that says if you see something, you should say something. Also, we can live our lives in such a way that they, they testify to the joy that is within us. They tell other people about our Lord and Savior and what he's done for us just by the way we live, by the way we speak to one another, and by the, the way we, we treat people. And so, kids, I want to invite you uh, to speak up if you see something that's happening that's not good, something that's wrong. I invite you to, to speak the truth in love, the way the Bible teaches us. And I also invite you to go after life with all that you have and, and live your life in such a way that it can be a living testimony to our Lord and Savior, even as we pursue the justice work that he has us all pursuing. That's all I have for you today. I hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Don't forget, as things open up around here, that these books are available for you to come and check out. And uh, our building, I think, will be opening in the next several months. We'll see. Uh, but if you ever want to come look at the books at the Social Justice Library, just contact myself or Alyssa or Daniel or Eric, and we'll make sure that you can come and check them out, okay? I hope you have a great day, kids. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the children of our congregation, all those who uh, will be watching this. Lord, we pray that you'll give them courage to speak up when they see something that is wrong in their midst. Lord, we pray uh, protection upon each one of them, that they'll step forward with courage to live the life you have marked out for them, Lord. Help them to tell their story to others as well, Lord, as that um, can bring perseverance and hope into the lives of other people. We thank you so much for loving us, Lord. We thank you for all these children. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. See you, kids. <laughs> Good morning, church. I'm going to be reading the Psalm 51, verse 1 to 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blots out my transgressions. Wash, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, 
you only have have I have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight? So you are right in your verdict. I'm justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother convinced me. Yet you dis dis desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create, create an a pure heart. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Bye. Good morning, church. Pastor Josiah and Alyssa have asked me to speak today. I have found that Psalm 58 fits so well into my own testimony so I thought I would intersperse some of that text with my own story. Hopefully this will be meaningful to those of you who are hearing it. In 2005, I took a semester off from college and traveled to Calcutta, India. I've always had a desire to serve. I had no intention of going to India. I was actually supposed to go to China and teach IT skills to adults. The trip was suddenly canceled and I found myself traveling to one of the most misjudged places in the world. I ended up working in a school in one of the city's many slums. Calcutta was a vibrant place full of people and life. There were modern shopping malls and towering gleaming office buildings mixed in with slums and desolation and poverty. The city was a mixture of the modern and the ancient. I remember sitting in an air-conditioned car waiting in traffic and a man in a wooden wheeled ox cart wearing a loincloth was blocking traffic. The children at our school lived in small houses, sometimes the size of your bathroom. The houses faced an active railroad track and trains would zoom by many times a day. I was there for three months. During that time, we formed many relationships in glue clearance to the people we were serving with. We had to leave the school for a time due to that part of the city being dangerous. The children and their families were being forced from their homes. They were squatters. The city had unsuccessfully sent the police in to evict them. Every day we went there, we didn't know if they would be safe or still be there. Through a translator, we found out that the police had come to tear the homes down and the children had been lined up in front of the armed police officers and bulldozers to send the message that you're not going to take our homes without going through them first. Thankfully, the police backed down and no one was hurt. The situation was still ongoing when we left. From what we could tell, eventually they were moved out peacefully sometime later. A lot of joy, a lot of heartbreak, and a lot of introspection. One of the highlights was making friends with a Hindu priest who took his places in the city tourists never get to go. It was kind of interesting because he was a Brahmin priest and his wife was Portuguese Catholic. Their son was being raised in Hinduism and Christianity both. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. 
According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. One thing I had to learn is that I was not in a Christian culture. The children made offerings to an idol outside the school every morning. I had to accept the things I could not change and simply do what I could. One boy at the school sticks out in my mind. He was about eight years old. The only item of clothing he owned in the world was a pair of oversized men's underwear tied on with a rope. Despite that, he was clean and well-fed. His parents cared for him the best they could. I never saw him without a smile on his face. He had so little in the way of material things, but the joy of the Lord was apparent in him even amidst difficult circumstances. Children in this country obsess and stress over what brand of shoes they own. A person who lets their life be ruled by brand names and status symbols has probably never gone without shoes, much less without a pair of pants. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. In 2016, I developed a severe pain in my right leg. Thinking it was a sprain, I ignored it till I woke up one morning and I was unable to work the pedals in my car to drive. After a doctor visit, I was rapidly scheduled for surgery. The doctor called it a peripheral nerve sheath tumor. It was a sarcoma, very fast growing soft tissue cancer. What followed were countless doctor visits and tests. I had two rounds of radiation a day. Radiation is painless when they're administering it, but the burns afterwards are painful and take a very long time to heal. I had to bend my leg during the treatments. The pain was excruciating as my sciatic nerve was being squeezed by the tumor. Your sciatic is a large nerve that runs down your back and controls your leg. Pain pills don't really help with that kind of pain. I learned to disassociate. For the time I was in the machine, I went to a happy and calm place. The pain was there, but it was far away. During radiation, you're in a lonely place. The room has a door like a bank vault and you're closed in by yourself. The table is cold and hard and there are scary looking and some rather invasive looking machines. Even amidst the loneliness of the situation, I found myself in the truth that I was not alone. Psalm, Psalm 57, uh, 5111 says, do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. The presence of God is what allowed me to find the calm and st be still throughout the experience. Throughout my twice daily radiation sessions, the doctor had been hinting that a hip level amputation would be my best course of action. There's no prosthetic limb for that kind of amputation. What they have looks like a pair of pants. I would have been effectively confined to a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Admittedly, I was pretty scared. One evening, a friend who had been in the medical field called to check up on me and told me no uncertain terms, call 911, <coughs> excuse me, and go to the hospital. He told me that I was septic, that is the tumor was poisoning me. My blood pressure was low, my heart rate was very high. I had edema and my leg and foot were swollen and several inches larger around than they normally would have been. My friend felt I wouldn't make the weekend unless I had medical intervention. I followed his advice and after a long bumpy ambulance ride, I ended up at the ICU of a large hospital in Tulsa. I spent about a week there with an IV running in both arms. I was discharged before my 38th birthday. I spent my birthday at home relaxing and watching TV. I don't remember much of that day. The next day I had an appointment with an orthopedic surgeon about 150 miles away. As sick as I was, I remember laughing till I cried in the doctor's office because he had one of the most hideous paintings I've ever seen in my life hanging on the wall. It was a little boy and his mother, and the little boy was holding a soccer ball that unintentionally looked like a pizza. The doctor who was to perform the operation and save my leg told me to come into the ER at midnight and have myself admitted for surgery. It was a lonely night there. I was parked out of the way and pretty much ignored. Because of the sepsis, they were concerned I was contagious. In John 12, 27, we find Jesus in a very uncertain situation. Here's some of what I was feeling at the time. 
Now my soul is troubled. And what I should say, Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason I have come to this hour. It was worth it because the procedure saved my leg. It lasted seven hours. I needed a skin graft to close the wound, but I was up and walking within a day or two. Before I went into surgery, I told the doctor and myself I was going back to India. I had promised God I would spend a significant time in service if I were able. I know that I did a great deal of good when I was in India, despite the limited circumstances. In my heart, I always felt like I could have done more. That trip for the second time hasn't happened yet. COVID and my long recovery has been in the way. Recovery is a twofold process. Your body heals from the surgery. Then again, you have to face the radiation. I had a big hole burned in the back of my leg that took months to heal. I couldn't even walk up on a curb. I had to physically grab my pants leg and lift to get in and out of a car. But I've healed well in the last few years. I'm quite pleased with myself for being able to keep up with the kids at the after school programs I've worked at. I lost some range of motion, but I still get tired on occasion. It's a small price to pay for being alive and mobile. Even in the state I was in, my spirit is not broken. Psalm 51.8 says, let me hear the joy and gladness let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Psalm 27, verse 5. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom I shall be afraid. When the wicked advance against me to devour me, he is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. For the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tent and set me high upon a rock. Since my recovery, I have honored my promise. I joined an AmeriCorps program in South Texas and the border with Mexico. I was there for 18 months. It was in a colonius, which is an unincorporated community on the border with Mexico. Some of the houses lacked utilities. As I said before, my desire was to go back to India, but you go where God sends you, not where you want to go. I was supposed to be a contractor helper and evaluate homes so repairs could be made. I ended up working at an after school program when the man that was running it quit. You could see Mexico from the parking lot. I saw border patrol raids and people thrown into the back of cop cars. I don't speak a word of Spanish, but I enjoyed working with the kids. We had a room full of energetic, happy children and no air conditioning in the brutal Texas heat. We admittedly spoiled them pretty rotten. There were times when the blessing seems to flow. We got food donations from various places, and many times we would have lots of fresh fruit and some not so healthy snacks. And many times the children had bags full of food to take home. We had many water play days in warm weather. We had water balloons and kiddie pools and squirt guns and a sprinkler. One little girl loved spraying the grown-ups with a hose, me especially. Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger lasts only a moment, for his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. As you can imagine, my life circumstances have had me crying out to God on many occasions. Hebrews 5, 7, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his reverent submission. Many Christians are not familiar with the term supplication. Supplication is humble prayer. It is fervently asking and knowing that he hears you. You do not demand of God and ask to do so once. You make a list of the things that you are thankful for and pray constantly over it. Supplication for many is a last ditch effort. It's made at a time of despair when one is at the end of their rope. One has to accept that God can and will say no. Supplication is acknowledging that we cannot do it on our own, but we need the Lord. Believe me, I've had my fair share of these moments. I want to encourage you not to hold back in supplication, recognizing God hears our prayers and answers them. 
Psalm 119 verse 15 says, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I feel like God shows me in a way to do both volunteer services. I searched for months before I found both BVS and the AmeriCorps placement. Brethren Volunteers was the one that chose me. Many organizations have an upper age limit or want someone from a very specific faith. I had almost given up when I applied to BVS. Coming here the year previous has been a rough one. I had lost my mom to a long illness in February and the restaurant that I had invested so much in to help open had failed. I was at peace with both events, but I needed some space from both. I found that with BVS. I take comfort in knowing that God is ordering my steps. Even now, he's preparing me for what will come next. What I have been through has equipped me for this time of service with you. And what I will learn in this journey will teach me what I need to know for what comes in the future. Do not hesitate to cry out to God. He hears you. He will be faithful to answer you. Even now, he is working things together for your good. As I close, please pray with me the last three verses of the scripture for this morning. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. to trust and obey.
you that will go where you're sending us, Father, and that, that we'll do it without fear, knowing that you're with us, knowing all you've already brought us through, and uh, that you'll certainly be with us from now on as well, Father God. Just um, order our steps, Lord, and help us to go where you want us to go. Help us to recognize that you're going to equip us for that journey, Lord. And help us to also recognize, Lord, that, that you've given us one another to help us on the journey as well, Father. That we thank you for this journey you've had us on. We thank you for how we can be strong for one another. How each other's testimonies can, be, can help us to be strong. How, how our testimonies can strengthen each one of us, Lord. Father, go with us from this place. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.